Okay, welcome back to lesson 23. This lesson is about McLaurin polynomial and Taylor polynomial is lesson 23. And these are the 10 problems that we are going to solve. Let's go to start. First, we're going to review what we are going to use. The McLaurin polynomial is always centered at c equals zero. And if you want to find the third degree poly McLaurin polynomial, the third degree McLaurin polynomial centered at zero is the value of the function at zero plus the derivative of the function evaluated at the point zero divided by one factorial multiplied by x. This is the tangent line to the curve f of x, this part plus the second derivative of the function uh, evaluated at zero divided by two factorial multiplied by x squared. And you have, if you want the third degree McLaurin polynomial, you, you stop at the third derivative of the function evaluated at zero divided by three factorial. And remember that three factorial means three multiplied by two multiplied by one multiply by x cubed. This is a polynomial, x cubed, x squared, x. And this polynomial is going to fit at at c equals zero at the function, is going to fit with the function. As you increase the number of terms, the fitting will be better and better. This is the McLaurin polynomial, and this is the Taylor polynomial. The Taylor polynomial, it's centered at x equals z. So z can be now 2, can be 3, can be 1 half, or can be x equal pi. It can be any number, so you center the polynomial at z. If you center the polynomial at z, the term that will appear in the polynomial, the x, will appear like x minus z. This polynomial is centered at c because when x equals z, c minus z is 0. So it takes the value of the function, f of z. So the Taylor polynomial centered at c is the third degree Taylor polynomial will be f of c plus f prime of c divided by 1 factorial multiplied by x minus c plus f second of c divided by 2 factorial by multiply x minus c squared, and the third degree will arrive to f third of c divided by 3 factorial x minus c cubed. I didn't read, write it down, uh, sorry. So the compact uh, form of, of saying this is that the n degree Taylor polynomial associated with the function f of x is the summation when n equals 0 to capital N, you stop in the n, in the 3, p sub 3, you stop at the 3, of the sum of all these terms. Of course, when n equals 0, f of 0 is the value of the function, if f of c. And 0 factorial is 1. OK. And when n equals 1, it will be the first derivative, f1, the first derivative divided by n equal 1, 1 factorial, 1 factorial, x minus c, x minus c raised to the power 1. When n equal 2, when this n become 2, it, it will appear this term is the second derivative. Evaluate the point c divided by 2 factorial, x minus c squared. And when n equal 3, it will appear the following term. So you know the pattern that uh, that you have to use. Um, this is what we are going to use to solve uh, problems. So the first problem say, find the second degree McLaurin polynomial of the function e to the x. Okay, the function e to the x is this function. At x equals 0, the function is 1. And it say, arrive to the second degree to the x squared term. And it say the McLaren polynomial. So it say that it's centered at x equals 0. So find a polynomial centered here at x equals 0 that fit, that agree, the polynomial agree with the value of the function 
with the derivative of the function and with the second derivative of the function. Who is this polynomial that agree with the function in such a way? Well, is this polynomial is f of 0 plus f prime of 0 divided by 1 factorial multiplied by x plus f second of 0 divided by 2 factorial multiplied by x squared. So let's go to find it. f of x is e to the x. Who is f of 0? f of 0 is e raised to the 0, which is 1. f prime of x is e to the x, so f prime of 0 is 1. f second of 0 is e to the x, so f second of 0 is also 1. So these terms are 1, 1, 1. So let's go to write the Maclaurin polynomial. is f of 0, 1, plus f prime of 0, 1 divided by 1 factorial, multiplied by x, plus f second of 0 is 1 divided by 2 factorial, which is 2, 1 half, I can write it, multiplied by x squared. So, if you see this term, this term is a rectilinear line, is the rectilinear line 1 plus x. Where is this rectilinear line? This rectilinear line is this rectilinear line, is the tangent line is the tangent to the po to the curve to the function e to the x at x equals 0. This is the function 1 plus x. And who is the function 1 plus x plus x squared? It's a polynomial centered at 0 that will agree with the function at 0, with the derivative of the function at 0 and with the second derivative of the function at 0. And how it will be? Well, if I add one more term, the, f the polynomial will be something, maybe, maybe, it will fit a little bit more, it will fit a little bit more, but as you go far, as you go far, the polynomial will not agree with the value of the functions. But at c equals 0, the polynomial will match very, very well with the function. At c equals 0, this polynomial, this one, this polynomial will agree with the value of the function, with the derivative of the function. If you do the derivative of the function, evaluate at c equals 0 will be the derivative of the function, will be 1. Do it. If you make the second derivative of the function and you evaluate the second derivative of this polynomial at x equals 0, it will agree with the second derivative of the function. So this is a polynomial that is trying to fit the function, to agree with the function as much as possible. Of course, if you go to GeoGebra and you first draw e to the x, shh, this curve, and later on you, it, you, you go in GeoGebra and you plug in the function 1 plus x plus x squared, you can have a better idea how the agreement it, is happening. At x is go far, the value of the function and the polynomial disagree. But near the point x equals 0, the agreement will be, will be good, will be a good agreement. So let's go to the next problem. OK, the second problem says find the first degree Taylor polynomial of the function tangent x at c equal pi divided by 4. Who is the function tangent x? The function tangent x is the function that have a asymptote at uh, pi divided by 2, at pi divided by 2, and minus pi divided by 2, it goes to plus infinity and minus infinity. So this is the function tangent of x. is sine of x divided by cosine of x. OK. It say Take the point c equal pi divided by 4. If this is pi divided by 2, pi divided by 4 is exactly in the middle. And the function pi divided by 4 has a value. What is the value of tangent of pi divided by 4? 
Well, tangent of pi divided by 4 is sine of pi divided by 4 divided by cosine of pi divided by 4. But pi divided by 4 is 45 degrees. Sine and cosine are the same. So, so sine divided and cosine are the same. So the tangent of pi divided by 4 is 1. OK. Now it say find the first degree polynomial of the function tangent of x at x equal, at c equal pi divided by 4. Who is the first degree polynomial at c equal pi divided by 4? Is the tangent line. Oh, is this line? Is the tangent line? So what the problem is asking me, find this line or find this polynomial that is a first degree polynomial. How I will find, I will write what I know, how to construct a first degree Taylor polynomial centered at C. It will be P1 will be F of C plus F prime of C divided by one factorial multiplied by X minus C. In our case, will be P1 of X, will be F of pi divided by 4 plus the derivative of the function respect to X, evaluate at the point X equal pi divided by 4 multiplied by X minus C, sorry, I don't know what I put here, x minus c is a linear term, x minus c raised to the 1. So what is the Taylor polynomial? So we need to plug in numbers. What is f of pi divided by 4? Is tangent of pi divided by 4? is 1. So I will need now what is the derivative of the function evaluated at x equal pi divided by 4. The c, I know, the c is pi divided by 4. So what is the derivative of the function? The function is tangent of x. What is the derivative of the tangent of x? You know, is secant square of x is 1 divided by cosine square of x. What is the derivative of the function evaluated at pi divided by 4? Well, it will be 1 divided by cosine square evaluated at the point pi divided by 4. But cosine square of pi divided by 4, pi divided by 4 is 45 degrees, because the sine is equal to the cosine. Sine square of pi divided by 4 plus cosine square of pi divided by 4 is 1. Because sine is equal to the cosine, this equation is the same that 2 times cosine of, of square of pi divided by 4 equal 1. So cosine square of pi divided by 4 is 1 half. Mm. So it will appear 1 divided by 1 half. 1 divided by 1 half is 2. Now I know this term is 2. This term is 1. This term is 2. This c is pi divided by 4. Who is the Taylor polynomial of tangent of x center at pi divided by 4? So the first degree polynomial, Taylor polynomial of tangent of x, will be f of pi divided by 4, 1, plus 2 times the derivative of tangent of x, evaluate that x equal pi divided by 4 is 2, plus, multiplied by x minus pi divided by 4. And this is the tangent line to the graph. This polynomial is this line, is the tangent line. If you keep adding terms, the function will fit more, the, the polynomial will fit more, will agree more with the derivative of the second derivative of the function, the second derivative of tangent of x, and will simulate a, a, at the center x equal, at c equal pi divided by 4, it will it will agree more and more with the function. This is the idea. Let's go to do the next problem. Okay, this problem is more or less exactly the same. We need to find the, we, we are given the function, 
we need to find the derivative of the first. The derivative of secant x is secant tangent of x. The second derivative of the function, or the derivative of secant tangent, is secant cube of x, secant tangent square of x. We evaluate the function at x equals 0 because it's a Maclaurin polynomial. So at x equals 0, the value of the function is secant 0. Secant 0 is 1. It's 1 divided by cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. And the first derivative evaluated at x equals 0 is 0 because tangent 0 is 0. So 0 by something is 0. And the third derivative is 1 because at x equals 0, this is 0. And this is secant cube. 1 divided by cosine cube. Cosine cube of 0, cosine cube, cosine of 0 is 1, cosine cube is 1. I evaluate at 0, so this is 0. So the second degree mm, Maclaurin polynomial will be f of 0 plus f prime of 0 multiplied by x plus f second of 0 divided by 2 factorial multiplied by x squared. If you plug in the numbers, will be f of 0, 1. f prime of 0, 0. f second of 0, 1. 1 divided by 2 factorial x squared. And this is the Taylor the Maclaurin polynomial of the function secant x. The next problem say find the third degree Maclaurin polynomial of the function x cubed plus 2x minus 1. Well, the third degree Maclaurin polynomial will be Maclaurin polynomial, it's centered at 0, it will be f of 0 plus f prime of 0 divided by 1 factorial multiplied by x plus f second of 0, it's say the third degree divided by 2 factorial, which is 2, multiplied by x squared plus f third divided by 6 multiplied by x cubed. Okay, so the polynomial is here. This is a polynomial. x cubed plus 2x minus 1. So the third degree Maclaurin polynomial is the function, what is the function? f0 is minus 1 plus f prime of 0 should be 2. 2 multiplied by x here, here, 2 divided, 2 multiplied by x plus plus f second of 0 multiplied by x squared. I don't see any any x squared, 0 x squared. Plus f3, f3 is 1 divided by 6, so x3 is 6, 6 divided by 6 by multiply by x cubed. So the third degree Maclaurin polynomial of this function is minus 1 plus 2x plus 1x cubed. And who is this function? Is the function. <laughs> who is this polynomial? Is the polynomial, the Maclaurin polynomial, is the function. So uh, no, uh, there is there is no a function is made of terms x x squared and you combine uh, the term a x x squared x cubed the maclaurin polynomial is uh, is um, make of a linear combination of a plus uh, a 1x plus a 2x squared plus a 2 a, a 3 x cubed etc plus a 4 x4 four. the 4 degree Maclaurin polynomial p4 of x is made of this term this one this one this one this one this one so if the function is a polynomial the polynomial the representative uh, uh, Maclaurin polynomial will be the function okay let's go to the next problem this following problem say find the third degree Maclaurin polynomial of the function sine of x. When it say Maclaurin polynomial, it say center 
at c equals 0. So what is the p3? p3 of x. Who is p3 of x? p3 of x is the polynomial that agree with the function in the value of the function at 0, because it's Maclaurin polynomial. Agree with the function with the first derivative of the function is the same first derivative of the polynomial. f prime of 0 divided by 1 factorial plus x plus f second of 0 divided by 2 factorial multiplied by x squared plus f third of 0 divided by 2 factorial multiplied by x cubed. This polynomial agree with the function in the value of the function at 0, in the first derivative of the function at 0, in the second derivative of the function at 0, in the third derivative of the function at 0. If you make the first derivative of the function, the derivative of p3 respect to the x will be, this is a constant, this is 0. Or what will be the first derivative of the function of p3? Well, this will be 0. Now I have to evaluate the polynomial at x equals 0. Mm. What will be? Well, the first derivative is 0. The derivative, this is a number. Multiplied by x is the number, so the first derivative will be f prime of 0. The second derivative will be 2 times the, this is a number again, f, f second of 0 divided by 2 factorial is a number, so it will be 2 times f second of 0 divided by 2 factorial multiplied by x plus 3 times, this is a 3 times, divided by 3 factorial, f3 of 0 is a number, multiplied by f3 of 0, uh, x squared, this is how we make derivative of uh, x cubed. The derivative of x cubed is 3 times the constant by x squared. If you evaluate at x equals 0, this will be 0. If you plug in 0 here, 0 by something is 0. So the first derivative of this polynomial will be f prime of 0. Oh, so it agree. It agree because at x equals 0, this will be 0 and this will be 0. So let's go to do it. So the function, the, the polynomial that we are going to construct is this polynomial, p3 of x. So we have the function and we need to, to create the information that needs the polynomial to be fixed. So f of x is sine of x. f prime of x is the derivative of sine, cosine of x. f second of x is the derivative of cosine, minus sine of x. And f third of x, because the, it implies the polynomial implied the third degree, is the derivative of cosine of sine of x is cosine of x, so it will be minus cosine of x. f of 0 will be sine of 0. Sine of 0, 0. f prime of 0 will be cosine of 0. Cosine of 0, 1. f second of 0 will be sine of 0, 0. And f, sec, f third of 0 will be minus cosine of 0, which is minus 1. So the, the values of the function is going like this, 0, 1, 0 again, minus 1, and keep repeating. F, if you calculate x4 of x, it will be the derivative of cosine is minus sine, will be sine of x. And what will be the derivative of f4 of a, of, at the value at 0? It will be 1. So it will be 0, sorry. So it will repeat 0, 1, 0, minus 1. Who is the Taylor polynomial? Well, I'll go to my, I have all the information. Remember, 0, 1, 0, minus 1. OK. So it will be f of 0, 0, 0. 
0, so the Taylor polynomial will be will be 0 plus 1x plus 0 divided by 2 plus 1 third x cubed. Let's go to write it here. P3 of x, the Taylor polynomial centered at, sorry, the Maclaurin polynomial is asking by the Maclaurin polynomial centered at C of sine of x would be f of 0, 0, plus f prime of 0. f prime of 0 is 1 multiplied by x, plus f second of 0, 0 x squared, plus f four of 0, plus f three of 0, sorry, <laughs> plus f3 of 0, f3 of 0 is here, is minus 1, minus 1, x cubed. As a conclusion, p3 of x is x minus x cubed divided by 3 factorial, sorry, divided by 3 factorial, or x minus x cubed divided by 6. This is the Taylor polynomial that agree with the function in the values, sine of x is the function, agree with the value of the function, with the first derivative of the function, with the second derivative of the function, and with the third derivative of the function. So this is the Taylor polynomial, and remember something, sine of x is an odd function. So the exponent that will appear here, it will be 1, 3, 5, 7, etc. Let's go to write both terms. It will be plus x5 divided by 5 factorial plus minus x7 divided by 7 factorial. If you keep doing you will construct an infinity series. You, you will convert the Taylor polynomial into a power series, an infinity series. And if you keep doing this, you may say that the function f of x equals sine of x converts to the power series, to the extended Taylor polynomial at infinity. So it will be x minus x cubed divided by 3 factorial plus x5 divided by 5 factorial minus x7 divided by 7 factorial plus x9 divided by 9 factorial. Now the challenge is how to write this Taylor polynomial in a very compact form. And to write this Taylor polynomial in a compact form is to write it like this. Sine of x, you see it appear 3, 5, 7, 9. 1, 3, 7, 9. This is 2n plus 1. When n equals 0, will appear, when n equals 0, will appear the 1. When n equals 1, will appear the 3. When n equal 5 will appear, when n equal uh, 2, it will appear 2 by 2, 4, 4 plus 1 is the 5, when n equal 3 will appear the 7. And it's an alternated series, plus, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. How I will write sine of x in a compact form? Well, because it's an alternative series, I would write minus 1 to the n. When n equals 0, this would be 1. When n equals 1, this would be minus 1. When n equals 2, it would be minus 1 squared, which would be positive. So I have to write the minus 1 to the n. I have to write the summation from n equals 0 to infinity. So I'm trying to write the power series. Um, I have to write the x. The x, and what, I, what are the exponents? The exponents are 2n plus 1. 
And what is the division that I have to write? There is a denominator here. What is the denominator? It's one factorial, three factorial, five factorial, two n plus one factorial. So we will see soon in the, in the next uh, lessons, we will see that sine of x can be written like this, like this summation, infinity summation. Is what is the difference between between a Taylor polynomial and and the series that goes to infinity? Well, is is the series? This is the series. It goes to infinity. The series is the Taylor polynomial. Is the Taylor polynomial expanded? Well, not the word expanded. Summing without never finish. You add term of the polynomial. Is when the summation end to infinity. Okay, let's go to the next problem. So this problem say find the third degree. You need to arrive to stop at the third degree. Taylor polynomial of f of x equal to divide by x. f of x is the function 2 divide by x or is the function 2 x minus 1. And the Taylor polynomial that they are asking me it say center at c equal 1. Why they don't ask me the Maclaurin polynomial center at c equal 0? Because the function at c equals 0 doesn't exist to divide by 0, doesn't exist. Uh, so the, the, the Taylor polynomial that we have to find should be at a point different than 0. So maybe c equal 1, or c equal 2, or c equal 3, whatever. So what we have to do, we have to first of all write the Taylor polynomial that we want to find. The Taylor polynomial is f of c plus f prime of c divided by 1 factorial multiplied by x minus c plus f second of c divided by 2 factorial multiplied by x minus c squared and say the third degree. So the third degree is f third of c, this is a number, divided by 3 factorial x minus c q. Okay, this is the Taylor polynomial that is centered at c, at c, at c. Okay, let's go. So, clearly, we need to know the value of the function evaluated at the point c. The first derivative of the function, the second derivative, and the third derivative. Let's go to do the, the work. So, f of x is 2 divided by x. So f of 1, because it's c equal 1, is 2 divided by 1, which is 2. f prime of x is, because f of x is, f of x is 2, x minus 1, f prime of x is minus 2, x minus 2. Mm -hmm. Evaluate f prime at sorry, evaluate that x equals c one will be minus two divided by x squared will be minus two divided by one squared, so the value will be minus two. So I have this value and this value. This value will plug in here. And this value will be plugging here. And the C, the 1, will be plugging here. Mm. So I do the P, what? F second of C, let's go to F second of X, will be minus plus 4 X, is X cubed, X minus 3, minus 2, multiplied by minus 2 is 4 plus 4, uh, you decrease the exponent in 1, so it will be 
4 if sec of x will be 4 divided by x cubed. Evaluate at the point x equal 1, f sec of 1 will be 4 divided by 1 cubed, which is 1, so it will be 4. So I have another term here. This one will go here. Will go here. And now the third term, f third of x, will be minus 3 by 4 is 12. 12x 12 minus 4. So f third of x can be written like minus 12 divided by x raised to the 4. So f third evaluated at the point 1 will be minus 12 divided by 1, so it will be minus 12. So what will be the Taylor polynomial of this function? This function is this function. This function 2 divided by x is something like this. It's 2 divided by x when x is positive. It has an asymptote in x equals 0. Uh, um, is positive, and when x is negative, the function does like this. But now we are centered at the point 1, and we are constructed that polynomial that will agree with the function as the value of the function, as the first derivative of the function, and as the second derivative of the function, and as the third derivative of the function. Who is p3 of x? p3 of x is, let's go to see, if f0, f0, well, oh, sorry, f1, f1 is 2, 2 plus f prime of 1. f prime of 1 is minus 2, minus 2, x minus 1, plus f prime, f second, f second evaluate at the point 1 is 4, x minus 1 is square plus f third. f third is minus 12 x minus 1 cube. And this is the third Taylor degree polynomial of the function 2 divided by x um, is the Taylor polynomial centered at c equal 1. Wow. Good. This is the result. But still we need to put the denominator. 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial. And now who is the Taylor polynomial? P3 of x, it will be 2 minus 2 times x minus 1 plus 4 divided by 2 factorial is 2. 2x minus 1 x squared plus minus 12 divided by 3 factorial. 3 factorial is 3 by 2. 3 by 2 is 6. 12 divided by 6 is 2. Minus 2x minus 1 cube. Can you guess P4 what it would be? Or P5? For sure you can get. Okay, um, let's go to the next problem. Okay, this problem says find the fourth uh, degree Taylor polynomial. So you have to work until the fourth derivative. So the function must agree in the value of the function at c equal 2, in the first derivative of the function at c equal 2, in the second derivative of the function at c equal to third and fourth. It must agree the polynomial and the function up to the fourth derivative. So what is the Taylor polynomial? The Taylor polynomial have a compact way to write it. It's the summation from n equals 0 to 4 of the n derivative of at the evaluate the point c divided by n factorial x minus c raised to the power n in other terms. P4 is f of c plus f prime of c, c is equal to f of 2 plus f prime of 2 divided by 1 factorial x minus 2, f second of 2 divided by 2 factorial x minus 2 squared. 
So what we need here, the only thing that we need here is not to find the C. The C is 2, by the way. Why we need to put it 2 here? Why we don't do it the McLaren polynomial? Because the function is not even defined at C equals 0. So we cannot talk in this case for this function about, uh, or, or about the McLaren polynomial because the function is not defined. F of 0 doesn't exist. So you will not be uh, able to find the McLaren polynomial. But you can find the McLaren polynomial at c equal 1. At c equal 1, the function natural log of x is this function. This is one of the functions that have to be in your pocket all the time that you need to know what is the graph of the function. This is the graph of the function of natural log of x. The function is increasing, but as x goes to infinity, it, 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 it increases very, very slow. Only, or almost they become horizontal. Almost the function becomes like horizontal function. Okay. Okay. So let's go to do the problem. So what we need is f of 2. Okay, f of 2 is here. f of 2 is natural log of 2. f prime of 2. f prime of 2. Uh, if f of x is natural log of x. f prime of x is 1 divided by x. is the derivative of the natural log of x. So what would be f prime of 2? 1 divided by 2. I keep going. f prime of 2. Uh, second of 2 is minus x squared. Evaluate the point x equal to will be minus 1, 4, etc., etc. So what you need is to plug in the number here. So let's go to plug in. So p4 of x, the polynomial center at x equal to, it will be f of 2, natural log of 2, plus f prime of 2. f prime of 2 is 1 half x minus 2 plus f second of 2, and following my equation, f second of 2 minus 1, 4, minus 1, 4, minus 1, 4, divided by 2 factorial is minus 1, 8, x minus 2 squared, plus, is an alternative series, plus f third of, of c, F third, the third derivative of the function, the, the function evaluate at the point c equal to the second derivative is 2 divided by x cubed, is 2 divided by 8 or 1 4. So plus 1 4 divided by 3 factorial. But what is 1 4 divided by 3 factorial? A 1 4 divide by 3 factorial is 6 is 124. So it will be 124 x minus 2 to the q minus f4. f4 is 3 8 minus 3 8 x minus 2 raised to the 4. So this is the Taylor polynomial center at c equal 2. This is the Taylor polynomial. And the problem is done. Um, I did a mistake because here there is 8 multiplied mm -hmm. by 4 factorial. The 4 factorial is 4 by 3 is, is, is 12. 12 is 24. 24 by 8. So it will be 3 multiplied by 8, and 4 factorial is 4 by 3, 12, 12 by 2, 24. 24 multiplied by 8. So, um, um, this is uh, 3 divided by 24 is 1, 8. Multiplied by 1, 8 is 1, 64. And this is the term that appears here. Okay? 1, 64. Okay, let's go to the next problem. Okay, problem A say, uh, find the 4 degree Taylor polynomial of the function cosine of x. Um, use this Taylor polynomial to approximate the function 
as at the point x equals 0 0.3. So we do the Taylor polynomial center at 0, and we find the value of the Taylor polynomial at when x equals 0 0.3 to approximate cosine of 0 0.3. And the second part of the problem is say, what is the error of this approximation? So it say, use the Taylor theorems. Do we will say what 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 it say the theory, the Taylor theorem, to obtain an upper bound for the error of this approximation? Okay, the first thing that we have to do is to build the four degree Maclaurin polynomial for cosine of x. To do that, we need the information of the function, of the derivative of the function, the second derivative, the third derivative, and the fourth derivative. So we need all this information, and we need to evaluate the function at the point zero, because it's a Maclaurin polynomial that is they are asking. We need to evaluate the derivative of the function at zero, the second derivative, the third derivative, and the fourth derivative. And when you evaluate, it will be 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1. So who is the, the, the fourth degree Maclaurin polynomial? You remember that cosine of x is an even function, uh, so it will appear only terms that are even in the polynomial. So let's go to do it. The polynomial that we are looking is the Maclaurin polynomial centered at zero. So it has these terms. They have one, two, three, four, five terms, and it say the four degrees. So it arrived to the four to the exponent four. So we plug in the numbers. What is f of 0? 1. f of 0 is 1. f prime of 0? 0. f second of 0 is minus 1. f third of 0 is 0. f four of 0 is, uh, is uh, 1. So the Taylor polynomial, sorry, the Maclaurin polynomial centered at 0, Maclaurin, is 1 minus 1 half x, x, x squared plus 1 divided by 4 factorial x to the 4. So what is the polynomial evaluate at 0 0.3? This will give, you, will give us an idea of what is the value of the function at the point x equals 0 0.3. The x equals 0 0.3, let's go to represent the function. The function is the function is cosine of x is cosine of x, so only terms that appear, uh, only even terms appear because cosine of x is a function that is even function. f of x is equal f of minus x. f of x equal f of minus x, so it's an even function. It means that it will appear on the polynomial only exponents that are even. Okay, and now what is the point that he wants me to, to, to find the value of the polynomial at 0 0.3? What is 0 0.3 exactly? Well, this is pi divided by 2, this is pi. Cosine of pi divided by 2, sorry, this is pi divided by 2, cosine of pi divided by 2 is 0. Mm. So what is 0 0.3? Well, pi divided by 2 is 3.14, approximately. 3.14 divided by 2, this is 1.7, uh, 1.7 more or less. So 1.7 is this point, pi divided by 2. So 0 0.3 is a point next to the 0. 0 0.3 is here. And I want to find the value of the polynomial at 0 0.3. The value of the function is cosine of 0 0.3. But I don't know how much is cosine of 0 0.3. I 
I want to estimate the value of the polynomial at 0 0.3. If I estimate the value of the polynomial at 0 0.3, will be 1, 1 minus 1 half, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 squared, plus 124, 0 0.3 uh, to the 4. And this is approximately, this is approximately, is here, is approximately 0 0.9555. 0 0.9 0 0.9555 so this is 1 this is 0 0.3 so the the value of the polynomial not of the function of the polynomial is is almost the value of the function but there is an error and this is the second part of the problem the second part of the problem is say Okay, if the value of the polynomial is 0 0.3, 0 0.955, what is the error that you make? What is the maximum error that you make? So the function f of x is equal to the polynomial, in this case the, f uh, the four degree polynomial, plus an error. The error, we call it R4, that depend on the point x that you choose. In this case, we choose the point x to be 0 0.3. So what is th what it say the theorem? The theorem say that R4 of x, the error at the point 0 0.3 is, I, 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 I know that is a scary, a scary equation, but not so scary. It say the error r4 of x or r4 of the point x r4 of the point 0. Point the error uh, that uh, will exist uh, during this uh, function equal to the polynomial plus the error the error will be this scary equation it will be um, 1 uh, divided by n plus 1 factorial the is the is the error you, you take the polynomial the fourth degree polynomial so it will appear the derivative respect to the x the fifth derivative respect to the x so let's go to write it like this f5 f5 of x no of c and who is c mm. who is c c is a no, is a point um, that is between you you are doing the polynomial center at zero so the point c is between zero and you are trying to evaluate the polynomial at the point x. So c is a point between 0 and 0 0.3. But you don't know what is c. And the theorem say that the error, the r4 of x, is 1 divided by n plus 1, the fifth derivative of the function at this unknown point. So how we are going to detect, how we are going to evaluate this? Of course, it's a function that depends on x, so it will appear x5. is the next, it's easy to remember because it's the next term of the Taylor polynomial, or mm, in this case of the McLaren polynomial, uh, ev uh, evaluate at unknown point z. So how we are going to evaluate r4 of x? Mm -hmm. We'll do like this. Who is f5 of c? f5 of x. f5 of x, if you see here, f4 is cosine of x, so f5 of x is minus sine of x, minus sine of x. If I evaluate at the unknown point f5 of c, at the unknown point will be minus sine of z. 
but I know that C is between 0 0.3 and 0, but, but I don't know what it is. The only thing, I don't know what is sign of anything, because this is what I'm evaluating, sign of a number. So what I will, I will do is the following thing. Sign of Z is between the values that can take are between minus 1 and 1. So the absolute value of the fifth derivative of any point z, wherever it is c, is less than 1. Mm. So now I have the maximum error that I can have. The maximum error will be r4 of 0 0.3 equal 1 divided by n plus 1. I stop my polynomial at 4, right? It was as 4. A 4, 4 factorial, so it will be 5 factorial, 1 divided by 5 factorial. F, so the absolute value of the error will be 1 divided by absolute, uh, uh, 5 factorial, right? The absolute value of the fifth derivative at the unknown point z multiplied by x to the z, but x is the point 0, point 0.3 raised to the fifth. So the maximum uh, error that I can make at the point 0 0.3 is equal 1 divided by 5 factorial. 5 multiplied by 4, multiplied by 3, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 1, multiplied by the maximum value that the function, the fifth derivative of the function at any point can take, 1, uh, by 0 0.3 0 0.3 raised to the fifth power. So 3 divided by 10 raised to the fifth power. Um, and how much it is? Well, you take the calculator and you see here, maybe you see here, is 1 fifth, 0 0.3 is 2 multiplied by 10 minus 5. Much more a 2 multiply by 10 minus 5. This is the error. And what is the value of the P4? P4 is here. P4 is 0 0.955. So the value of sine of 0 0.3, sine of 0 0.3 is approximately with the maximum error, sine of 0 0.3 is 0 0.955, the polynomial 0 0.955 plus minus the error. The error is so small, is 2 raised to 10 minus 5, or 0 0.123, let's go to put it here, 0 0.000. 10 minus 1, 10 minus 2, 10 minus 3, 10 minus 4, 10 minus 5, 2, 10 minus 5. So you imagine, you imagine how accurate is this value for sine of 0 0.3. Uh, when in the 18th century and 19th century, when they make tables like table for sine or table, table for logarithms, what they do is this method. They, 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 they only take care the value for the polynomial of the fourth term of the fourth. Uh, uh, they they develop a Taylor polynomial of four degrees, for example. They they measure the maximum error that they have and they create a table. So they create a table for sine of 0 0.3, for sine of 0 0.1 for sign of uh, 1, uh, uh, whatever. OK, let's go to the next problem. OK, this problem say use the fifth degree Maclaurin polynomial, Maclaurin center at 0, for the exponential function to approximate e. So what it says, use the Maclaurin uh, uh, Maclaurin polynomial to approximate to write e to the x as the polynomial p5 of x, 5 fifth degree, plus the error, the r5 of x, plus the error. 
OK. If we know, if we do this, e to the x, this is something that have to be in your pocket always. e to the x is 1. If I do the Taylor polynomial, it will be 1 plus x plus x squared divided by 2 factorial plus x3 divided by 3 factorial plus x4 divided by 4 factorial and it say the fifth degree so the fifth degree is x5 divided by 5 factorial so what it says evaluate e when x equal 1 when x equal 1 is e e to the raise e raised to the power 1 is e is 1 plus 1 x equal 1 plus 1 half plus 1 6 plus 1 3 uh, 1 24 plus 1 divide 5 multiplied by is 100 uh, 116 116 5 factorial is 5 multiplied by 4 factorial is equal 5 multiplied by 24 uh, 24 is was is um, is 120 120 sorry 120 so this sum will give you uh, the what is e so if you make the sum of all this term it would be 2.7166 but this sum will have an error what is the error what is r5 what is r5 at the point 1 what is r5 of 1 let's go to find r5 of 1 r5 of 1 is the sixth derivative the sixth derivative is e to the x divide by 6 factorial multiply by x to the 6 and is the 6 factorial evaluate at the point x equals z and the point z is a point that is between 0 because we are centered at the 0 and the point x that is the point 1 so e to the x is this function this is the function e to the x and what we are trying to know is what is this height what is e e to the one what number is e so we are centered at the point x equals zero we make the taylor the mclaurin polynomial at x equals zero we approximate and now we are want to know this 2.7166 what is the error and the error the theorem say that the error that you make at x equal 1 is e to the x evaluate at a point between 0 and 1 this is the point z between 0 and 1 and is the fifth derivative the fifth derivative of e to the x is e to the x so it will be e to the z evaluate the point c divided by 6 factorial by the point uh, 1 raised to the 6 evaluate at the point but how how i will i will make e to the z uh, well to make e to the z with because z is between 0 and 1 could be any value it's an unknown z uh, so maybe because the derivative of e to the z maybe we choose for sure will be e to the z will be smaller than 3 because you know if i go here it will be maybe 3 at certain point so because the function is crescendo is increasing for sure the value of e to the z here will be a smaller than 3 so i can make an approximation that r5 at the point 1 at x equal 1 
is instead of e to the c, I will put 3. 3 divided by 6 factorial, 1 to the 6. Oh, so r5 of 1, it will be 3 divided by 6 factorial. 6 is 6 by multiply by 4, multiply by 3, multiply by 2, multiply by 1, by 1. So r5 of 1 will be, 1, 3 will cancel, will be 1 divided by 6 by 4, 24, 48. 1 divided by 48. And 1 divided by 48 is approximately 1 divided by 50. And 1 divided by 50 is approximately 2 divided by 100. So the error, the maximum error that I can have at the point 1 is a smaller, the maximum error is a smaller than 2 divided by 100 or 2 multiplied by 10 minus 2 or 0 0.02. Then, as a conclusion, the value of the function f at the point x equal 1, where the function f of x is e to the x, the value of the function, this is e, the value is 2.7166, that is the sum of all these numbers, plus the error. And the error that we make at the point x equal 1, the error is 2 multiplied by 10 minus 2. This is the error. So, it's a good approximation, you know, the error is here, 0 0.02. So the error is on this digit. Let's go to the next problem, I think it's the last one. Okay, this problem says differentiate the fifth degree Maclaurin polynomial for the sine of x to obtain the fourth degree more polynomial for the cosine of x. So you start with the fifth degree polynomial of the Maclaurin uh, of the Maclaurin uh, polynomial of sine of x. You differentiate, this is sine of x, you make the derivative and you will obtain, instead of the fifth the, the, mm, polynomial, you will obtain the four degree polynomial of the derivative of the function, of the polynomial, that is, will be the cosine of x. So let's go to do it. Sine of x is x, the polynomial we already see in the previous example, the polynomial um, a representation of sine of x uh, up to the fifth degree is x minus x cubed divided by 3 factorial plus x5 divided by 5 factorial plus an error. There is an error here. Now we do the derivative of this polynomial. So this is not an equality. This is something. Sine of x is approximately this. So we do the derivative of sine of x, the derivative of the representation of this polynomial. And we want to check if when we do this, we will find the representation of the polynomial for cosine of x. Okay, the derivative respect to the x of sine of x, this is cosine of x, cosine of x. And what is the derivative here? The derivative of x is 1. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared divided by 3 factorial. The derivative of x5 is 5x4, 5x4 divided by 5 factorial. If I take the 3 factorial with this 3, it will appear a 2 factorial. If I take the 5 with the 5 factorial, it will appear a 4 factorial in the denominator. So now I have the 4 degree polynomial a four degree polynomial that represents cosine of x. How do I know that it represents cosine of x? Well, find the Maclaurin polynomial for sine of x. A cosine of x is an even function, so it will appear even an even exponent. 
and this is the representation so remember also that you can write sine of x in a very compact way sine of x will be the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of if you are going to with the odd powers it will be 2n plus 1 so it's an alternative series minus plus minus plus minus plus is minus 1 to the n x to the 2n plus 1 1 3 5 1 3 5 7 2n plus 1 divided by 2n plus 1 factorial if i make the derivative here the derivative will be a, a polynomial and what will be the polynomial of sine of x the derivative of sine of x will be respect to x of course I, it will be minus 1 to the n the derivative of 2n plus of x to the 2n plus 1 is 2n plus 1 by x raised to the power 2n plus 1 minus 1 or 2n divided by the denominator that is, is a constant uh, uh, so it will be the summation of all this expression and this will be when you cancel 2n plus 1 when, uh, when you write 2n plus 1 factorial like 2n plus 1 plus 2n it will be 2n factorial and the 2n plus 1 cancel and again you will obtain that the derivative of the sine of x is this expression and this expression is cosine of x cosine of x is this expression in case that you don't feel comfortable with summations notation uh, you don't have to do it like this you can do it uh, for example like this uh, you express cosine of x like the uh, Maclaurin polynomial so it will be 1 minus x squared divided by 2 factorial plus x x4 to the 4 factorial minus x is divided by 6 factorial plus x and the derivative of cosine of x this is sine of x so the derivative of cosine of x will be 0 the derivative of 1 0 the derivative of x squared which is minus 2x the derivative of x4 which is 4x cubed divide by 4 factorial the derivative of x6 will be 6x5 divide by 6 factorial and the derivative of x raised to the eighth power will be 8 times x7 8 7 divided by 8 factorial if you work a little bit it will be minus x plus 1 divided by 3 minus 1 divided by 5 factorial x5 plus x7 divided by 1 divided by 7 factorial and this is the Maclaurin's polynomial of, of uh, sine of x so it's the same thing that we did before let's go to solve another lesson